This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Lord's house as we continue our Advent midweek series, uh, uh, the second of our, th- of our three uh, Wednesday services. And we, uh, as mentioned last week, we follow the, uh, this year's theme entitled The Rise and Shine. And we look at the different aspects of the light of Christ who is coming into the world. And today's uh, theme will focus on healing, the Lord's healing light. And our basis will be the Old Testament reading that we'll hear from the prophet Malachi in chapter 4. So we'll follow the order of service as printed in your folder. A reminder that the offering uh, for today is, is re- being received in the plate in the back. So you can place that uh, uh, your offering in the plate if you haven't done so already a- a- as you depart. So uh, we'll begin uh, this day with uh, the invocation. We begin on the bottom of page 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The Son of Righteousness shall rise. You shall go out, leaping like calves from the stall. Who called us out of darkness. We sing the hymn. Please note we'll stand for the final stanza in praise to the triune God. Holy Lord, merciful God, you sent John the Baptist to be a burning and shining light. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Father. us. 
Forgive us, Father. Though God sees all of your sin, he also sees Jesus, who was born for you, suffered for you, died for you, and lives for you. In Christ's name, you are absolved, forgiven and cleansed in his blood. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God our Father, send forth your Spirit so that we may anticipate with repentant joy the birth of our Savior. Listen to his word and seek to live according to it until he comes again. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading, which will also be the basis of today's message, is from the prophet Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Second Peter chapter 1. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able as we sing.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not deemed true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John, for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing, bear witness about me, that the Father has sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We continue in the hymnal with hymn 348. Yesterday, hey Jude, twist and shout, you know where this is going? We all live in a yellow submarine, I want to hold your hand, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, (laughs) and Strawberry Fields Forever. Sound familiar? Most most of us in this room, uh, those music titles sound familiar. Hey, did you know that in 1964, the Decca Recording Company told this group of men, quote, groups with guitars are on their way out. Well, in spite of that, John, Paul, George, and Ringo, a.k.a. the Beatles, went on to change a generation. 
But let's add to the, today one more song to the best of the Beatles. And what would that be? Here comes the sun, right? Here comes the sun. Appeared, first appeared on the Beatles album entitled Abbey Road. Well, here comes the sun, S-O-N. That's the theme of today's Old Testament reading from the prophet Malachi. The focus of our Advent message, of course, is on Christ's second coming. The grand finale of history, our final victory, and the marriage supper of the Lamb, which will have no end. Christ indeed came to us at Bethlehem, and he is coming again someday. Praise God. The prophet Malachi longed for the sun, not because he was sitting under a rainstorm. He lived, though, during the dark days of the Persian domination over Judah in the mid-400s B.C. The darkness at that time was all-encompassing. Malachi's contemporaries were saying things like, and this is quoted in Malachi chapter 1, the Lord's table is contemptible. And then in chapter 3, it is vain to serve God. Translation, serving God is a waste of time. Those are dark words, if you ask me. And at the root of it all is the expression in Malachi chapter 2. The question is asked, where is the God of justice? Where is he? People were saying, God you say that you will come again and right all of the wrongs, that you will heal every hurt and vindicate your people, and you say that you will defeat every enemy. But God, none of this has happened. So where are you? Are we wasting our time? Malachi chapter 3, evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test, and here's the kicker, and they escape. <laughs> they look like they're getting away with it. Do we know that frustration in today's world? Absolutely. God, you said you would take care of this. It's not me. The evil people seem to be getting away with things here. So let's say we're overcome with this kind of cynicism and this sarcasm. Then our prayers don't deepen. Our devotion doesn't increase. Our zeal doesn't grow. And our generosity remains stagnant. And we cry out, where is the God of justice? Where is he? A five-year-old boy watched with fascination one day as his dad filled up the family car with gas. A few days later, the five-year-old decided to do the same thing. Removing the gas cap, he placed the end of a garden hose in the gas tank and was just about ready to turn on the water when his horrified dad intercepted him and foiled his plan. Why do I tell that story, which isn't true, but it probably was close to true with me, because I, I was fascinated when dad filled up the gas every time. I was like, what is, it, what is, that, what is he doing there? But the thing is, the point is, the child had a misconception. He had a misconception about the kind of hose it took to fill a car with gas. Now, misconceptions can be humorous. Misconceptions can be harmful. And occasionally, misconceptions can be fatal. 
it's a fatal misconception to think that Christ is not coming back, that he's not going to return, that his promises are null and void, that there will be no final victory. It's a fatal misconception to say evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Why is that a misconception? Because Malachi says so. He says, here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. The sun will come. Why? Because of God's overwhelming love for his people. How so? Well, here, this is one of my, <laughs> my, my the kids that I, t- confirmation kids I teach, they always, every, every church I've served, they always give me a hard time when I say, this is one of my favorite verses. And they, and they say, Pastor, you say that about every verse. Okay, well, yeah, there's lots of good verses. But I really like this. Malachi chapter 3. The Lord says, They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I act for my treasured possession. Treasured possession. The Hebrew word for treasured possession is segulah. Segulah. And it's the most enduring term that God has for his people. Even though they sometimes didn't feel valuable, they were still loved. These were not valuable people in the eyes of the world. No, the eyes of the people of the world just kind of shoved, you know, ready to shove them aside. But they were loved. So much so that God calls them his segula, his treasured possession. Even when we don't feel all that valuable, God calls us his segula his treasured possession. We are so valuable that God's heart aches until the day when he will perfectly restore us, when he will raise us up and make all things new. Now, the Bible isn't all that clear about all the finer details of what this is going to look like. I get that question, you know, what's heaven going to look like? What's eternal life going to look like? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot of detail. But this much is sure. The future for believers is glorious. How so? Well, the Lord says through Malachi, but for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. The sun of righteousness is going to bring with him a new day when every hint of darkness will be scattered All gloom will be gone, and the night of terror and dread will be forever banished. On that day, our righteous standing, which is by faith, will become clear, even though it doesn't seem at times all that clear right now to uh, the world's eyes. But it will become clear, just like the shining sun in all of its brightness and beauty, The Son of Righteousness will also bring healing in his wings. He will restore everything that we have lost. All the years of pain will be erased. Every tear of disappointment will be wiped away. And the symphonies we missed and the sunsets we didn't see will beautifully be played over and over again. There will be healing for people who have been broken in life. People broken by things like divorce and illness, death and loss. In the twinkling of an eye, Jesus will erase our lifetimes of hurt and pain and brokenness. We will see the Savior born in Bethlehem take up his cross for us. We will see the hands and the feet that took the nails the head that was crowned with thorns. We will see the Savior, once wrapped in swaddling cloths, who left behind the burial wrappings when he rose from the dead. And we will hear the words of welcome, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. All of this will be ours on that day and so much more, because the son who once slept in a manger 
finished the work of salvation and hung on a cross. Think of the scene. The sky is dark. Two criminals are slowly dying, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus is in the middle, taking a deep breath and speaking his last words. John records them. It is finished. The veil of the temple is torn in two. Jesus' blood is poured out. The curse of sin is removed. The sacrifice complete. Death is defeated and paradise is restored forever. And because the Son of Righteousness rose on the third day, he will come again with healing in his wings. When the Son comes again, Malachi says, you're going to go out leaping like calves from the stall. Imagine that. <laughs> what joy. What exuberance. What that will look like, I don't know, but you can do the dance if you want. What freedom. Leaping like calves. Critics have denied that Jesus is going to return. Cynics have laughed at the idea of it. Others have tried to explain it away. The brightest and best think that Jesus' return is a fairy tale, a legend, or a myth. But the truth stands solid as a rock and soon will be fulfilled. On that great day when Jesus returns, all the faithful will celebrate with great joy and we will shout aloud, what? Here comes the Son. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now come before our Lord in prayer, as he has invited us to do. We'll, we uh, continue in your service folder on page 7. As we come before the Lord, uh, let us stand. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, by your poverty we have become rich. By your act of grace we are filled. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, we pray for all who cry out in their time of need, especially all who have asked for our prayers, as well as those that we now lift up to you silently in our hearts. Lord Jesus, help us to be a blessing to people who suffer in sadness, guilt, or need. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, you have filled our lives with your love and forgiveness. As your love overflows into our lives, help us to overflow with great mercy. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, we pray for those who live in fear or need. Bless them through our works of mercy. Jesus, Son of Righteousness, The day is most certainly coming when you will come, Jesus, as the Son of Righteousness, with healing in your wings. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.
Please note, we will sing stanzas 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4 of hymn 349. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.